Hey there, my fellow designers and creatives. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another video in my mega product design course for beginners. Today, we're gonna to learn how you can become a much smarter designer using chat GPT. Now, before I get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video if you haven't done already. And I've recently launched my ultimate guide to learning product design. You can check out the link in the description. You can go ahead and go to the chapter section and read all the chapters. There are five modules and I'm going to be releasing each of these modules slowly uh, as the weeks go by. So highly recommend you check it out. It's something that I've put in a lot of time and effort and definitely something that you will benefit from if you are just starting to learn product design. All right, so without any further ado, let's get started. Now, as you can see over here, I've actually written down a lot of prompts. I'm going to take you through all of them and I'm going to explain a lot of things in very detail. But the most important thing for you to understand is that you need to use ChatGPT for direction rather than answers. Because if you use it to get answers and just blindly listen to what it's saying, then you're actually going to become less smarter, which you don't want. You actually want to become more smarter. So which means you need to apply a lot of common sense and validate every single thing ChatGPT is saying before you go ahead and take the things it's giving you and making use of it. Right. Now, the first thing that I'm going to show you is how you can go ahead and generate simple problem statements at an overall level. All right. So let's dive in. Now, as you can see on the top, on, I've written the prompt is generate 10 app ideas that are related to gifting. So here I'm actually taking a concept and asking ChatGPT to give me 10 concept ideas. Right. So here it's saying a gift recommendation app that helps you get personalized gift, uh, a gift registry apps where you can add a wish list of gifts, a gift wrapping app that allows users to choose a variety of wrapping paper designs and have their gifts professionally wrapped and delivered. Right now, there are so many amazing different versions. And I think this is also pretty cool. A gift box subscription app that uh, curates selection of gifts to a users on a monthly or a quarterly basis, right? So for example, over here, this could also be used when you want to give something to somebody, maybe on a festival, maybe on Christmas, maybe on Valentine's Day, maybe on somebody's birthday, this gift box can actually be pretty useful. And maybe you could buy a subscription out of it. Now, as you can see, all of these are solutions and not really problem statements that in a way they're also called as design briefs. Okay, but how do we generate a problem statement and how do we structure the whole thing before you actually sit down and start working on it? I'll obviously show you all of that, but I'm just giving you a couple of examples over here. All right, the next one, generate 10 app ideas for the hotel management industry. So now I'm taking an industry over here before I took a concept, which was gifting. And now I'm taking industry as an example, and let's see what prompts it was able to give me. So a hotel booking app that allows users to search and book rooms at hotels throughout the world. This is pretty obvious and quite straightforward. A hotel loyalty program app that rewards guests for repeat business and offers exclusive discounts and perks. This is also fine. A hotel room service apps that allows guests to order food, drinks, and other amenities to their room. This is a pretty cool problem statement. A hotel concierge app that provides personalized recommendations and assistance and all of that stuff. Hotel amenities app, a maintenance app, rewards app, right? So we're getting some ideas over here. We're getting things at a top level. Now, when you're learning product design, it's actually fine if you can just take one of these simple concepts and just build a couple of screens around it to practice UX design, right? Not everything has to be a full-fledged app that you have to add to your case study. In fact, I have a dedicated chapter where I go through developing problem-solving skills with mini problem statements, where I show you how to take a simple, tiny problem statement and build a beautiful user flow with edge cases so that you understand interaction design, so that you understand how to design user flows, so that you understand how to use and adopt great UI and UX patterns. Anyway, let's go back. So that's one. Another one is you can go ahead and give a very specific concept. Here I'm seeing generate a secret Santa app idea. I think the answer would be quite straightforward over here in this case. Now another one is even more specific, right? So five camera app ideas, okay? So first one, a camera app that allows users to take stunning panoramic photos by automatically switching, uh, stitching together multiple photos taken from different angles. This could be pretty cool, right? You take it from different angles and then it stitches it all together. Of course, coming up with the concept is very simple and easy, but then actually designing the screens and a user flow and putting all of those together so that it makes sense to the user is the hard part, but at least this gives you an idea. A camera app that offers a variety of filters and effects. I think this is pretty straightforward. We already have many apps like this. Um, what else? Uh, a camera app that allows users to take long exposure and capture light rails, star trails, uh, and dynamic night photography effects. I think the iPhone pretty much can do most of these things, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and also a camera app that helps users take better portraits, but off by offering features such as bokeh skin effects and skin smoothing, right? Now, most of these apps already exist, right? But if you want to go a little bit more detailed, you can 
give a better prompt. So maybe you can say five camera app ideas to take great photos of uh, buildings or of people or selfie or something like that. Try to go a little bit more deeper if that's what you want to do. Okay. Now, another way of doing it is taking um, an existing app and asking uh, features for it. Now, ignore this one because I just mentioned five features of Instagram. Uh, then I went and generated, can you generate five new features for Instagram, right? So let's see what ChatGPT says. A feature that allows you to schedule posts in advance, which is beautiful, definitely recommended for a lot of people who use Instagram on a regular basis. Basically, content creators who post content on a regular basis. A feature that automatically detects and removes spams, comments, and accounts, helping to create a safer and more positive community. That is also brilliant. You don't have to worry about hate comments and getting trashed on social media. A feature that allows users to add music to their posts. This is very interesting because Instagram just recently added this. So maybe ChatGPT doesn't know about it yet. A feature, to, a feature that offers a range of tools and resources for content creators, including analytics, scheduling, collaboration tools, and stuff like that, right? So I think analytics... It already offers quite a bit. Uh, scheduling is something new. Uh, I'm not sure what collaboration tools could be. Now, if you want more details on collaboration tools, you can write a follow-up prompt and say, can you give five examples of collaboration tools, right? So you can go ahead and provide that extra prompt. So as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm taking direction from ChatGPT and not answers. I'm trying to sit down and validate everything that it's saying and then trying to see what is something that I can use, something that I can throw away, right? That is really important. A feature that allows users to customize feeds by organizing accounts into different categories or creating filters and curate their content, right? So here we have design briefs, right? Now, obviously, I'm going to get into the part where we talk about metrics. We're going to talk about user flows. We're going to talk about defining the problem statement, user personas, and all of those things. But right now, we're just trying to get something to get started with. Um, here, here is an interesting one where you're focusing directly on a specific target user, right? So for example, generate app ideas for students studying abroad. You're picking a target user and then you're asking ChatGPT to generate problem statements for that particular user. This is another direction you can take, right? So a language learning app, a travel planning app, a budgeting app to uh, help students track their expenses, a social networking app that connects students studying abroad, right? Um, a safety travel app, a cultural exchange app, right? Um, a, st a study abroad scholarship app that helps students find and apply for scholarships and opportunities to fund their study abroad, right? So many cool ideas. Or you can just go crazy and just say generate 10 app ideas and you're going to get 10 different random app ideas. Personal finance app. Now, typically I've realized that doing this is not really helpful because it's too vague and it's some, it's helpful if you actually take something that you're passionate about, something you understand in, something you care about, something you have experience in, right? So for example, if you're a student studying abroad, you might know a lot of problems or situations that students go through, right? If you are a musician or a stand-up comedian, it's easy for you to relate to that type of user persona, right? But it totally depends on you. I would say try to be as specific as possible rather than being very vague. Here is another one. Generate an internal tool ideas for a company, right? An employee directly that allows employees to search for and connect with employees within the company, right? A company calendar, uh, a task management. Now, the thing is, all of these are not really big problem statements, but these are simple problem statements that you can actually pick up to just start practicing, right? You don't have to make a huge case study out of this. This is just for you to get ideas and practice things. A company-wide survey tool that allows employees to provide feedback. This is pretty interesting. A company training portal that gives online uh, resources to help employees develop new skills, right? Here's another one. I'm just taking another example. Generate 10 app ideas for a luxury hotel. So I'm trying to be very specific over here, right? A hotel booking app, loyalty program, hotel concierge app, room service. I think we already looked at this. I think we looked at it somewhere over here to the hotel management industry. I think it picked the same thing. Uh, so maybe I should have been a little bit more clear with my prompt, but that is um, absolutely okay. Here's another way of doing it where you're being very specific and very direct, right? How can you design an A-B testing feature for a dating app, right? If you are a user of a dating app, of course, this is quite vague for chat GPT to understand. I can be a lot more clear, but I'm being very vague specifically intentionally over here so that I can tell you how it works and how you can go ahead improving your prompt, right? So A-B testing is a method of comparing two versions. So it's giving an introduction to what A-B testing is. In the context of a dating app, a potential A-B testing feature could allow user to test different versions of their profile, such as profile picture or bio on see which receives more matches or likes. Now we're getting some sort of a solution over here, but we need to get into a lot more details, right? So to design this feature, the app could randomly assign users to one of two groups. I think 
this is pretty obvious. The app will automatically do this. The app could then track the number of likes and matches received by each group and determine which version performs better based on the data collected. This is actually one of the problem statements that are there on my Instagram account. So when I'm saying introduce an A-B testing feature for a dating app, right? So if you came across a prompt like this, you can go ahead and throw that in chat GPT and see what it gives. So I'm taking here an example where I'm asking ChatGPT and I'm preparing the sort of the problem statement of the brief, generate 10 app ideas for elderly people. Okay, so I'm taking a target user as the subject line. Now, there are so many things, a medication management app that helps uh, elderly users track their medication, very helpful and important, a fitness tracker app, a virtual socialization app, right, a daily routine and reminder app that um, helps elderly users manage their daily tasks, such as taking medication, completing household chores, right? Now, like I said, these are all solutions, these are ideas. This isn't enough for you to start designing screens. So let me show you what I've done here. Now, um, I've taken this one, the ninth one, which is a memory and cognitive training app that offers brain games and activities to help elderly users maintain cognitive function. Now, and I've taken this as a brief. Now, this is the app idea. This is pretty much like the overall solution, right? And what I've done is I've put that into a prompt and I've said, I've just copied that entire thing, pasted it over here and I said, can you create realistic personas for the above app idea? Right now, we already know that this is for elderly people, but if we want to generate personas, how do we do it? Who is this app really for? Can we generate a nice persona? Right? So what it went ahead, it gave me three personas um, and let's try to read it. So we have an 85 year old retiree who lives in a small apartment. She enjoys gardening and playing board games, but has noticed that her memory and cognitive skills have been declining. Margaret is looking for an app that will help her keep her mind active sharp and it is easy for her to use on our smartphone. So here what we're trying to figure out is what is the use case, right? Why does this app have to exist? What is the point of having this app? So what we're doing here is we are reverse engineering from the solution and then we're moving backwards and creating things so that we have a full-fledged problem statement and context built around which we can then start solving for. Right. So here I would say looking for an app that will keep her mind active and sharp uh, and easy to use on her smartphone. Right. This these are two main points. Then John is a 77 year old widower who lives in a retirement community. He works as an engineer and solves, you know, whatever. Um, John is looking for an app that offers him a variety of brain games and activity that will challenge him and keep him engaged. So keeping him engaged is the problem that you're trying to solve over here. Right. So here it is to keep your mind active and sharp. All right. Here the use case is to help um, John um, be engaged and keep him busy. Right. So the use case here is different. So what that means is for Margaret, you might want to solve this in a different way. And for John, you might want to solve it in a different way. And if you're solving for both Margaret and John, you need to think about different things of what is it that Margaret wants and what is it that John wants. Right. Maybe for John over here, you might want to come up with a gamification system to keep him engaged. Maybe for Margaret, you want to have multiple difficulty levels so that it keeps her mind sharp and active. Right. I'm just giving a lot of ideas over here. Next, we have Rachel. Rachel is a 70 year old retiree who lives with her husband. She's an avid reader and does a lot of crossword puzzles. But notice that she has trouble remembering names and details as she gets older. So Rachel is looking for an app that will help her improve her memory and cognition function and that is easy to use on her tablet. So here you're getting to know what device do you think you should solve it for, right? And what is the objective over here to help improve her memory and cognitive function. Now, to be very honest, we might have just one user persona. We can combine all of these three things and just have one user persona and gamify the experience, have multiple levels, and of course have different types of games that sort that sort of cater to different types of benefits, such as improving memory, such as cognitive function, such as keeping mind active and sharp, and stuff like that, right? So here we're getting an idea of who the target users can be and why should this app exist, right? That is the most important part. Now, then we go ahead and say, hey, can you define a core problem statement for the above app idea, right? Now, the most important thing for you to understand is that because ChatGPT is an AI, it's sort of like a human, but it's not a human, which means if you talk to it like a human being, it will understand. So I just said, can you define a problem statement for the above app idea, right? So it is, it is remembering my conversation and it is going to go forward with it. It's going to assume that 
I'm talking to it and it's following a conversation, right? So here is what we have. Now here is a potential uh, core problem statement. Now let's read it and see if it actually makes sense. Elderly individuals often experience a decline in memory and cognitive function as they age, which can lead to feelings of frustration and isolation. All right. So we're getting some sort of an overall problem statement here. Many traditional methods of improving these skills, such as paper-based um, puzzles and games, are not always accessible or engaging for elderly users, right? So here, we're getting into a little bit more deeper, right? We want to keep it as an engaging experience, right? So we want to make sure that the app is more engaging um, than the traditional um, non-digital methods, right? Our app aims to address this problem by providing a convenient and interactive platform for users to improve their memory and cognitive function through a variety of brain games and activities. So you've now generated a problem statement and this makes a lot of sense to be very honest, right? It's very clear, it's very crisp, it's giving you a lot of information about the main problem, it's giving you the current behavior, it's also telling you what the solution should be, right? So now you actually have a lot of context for you to start working. And I'm gonna give you so many more examples and amazing examples as we progress through the video, so just stick with me. Now, coming to the solutionizing part of it, right? Now this can also help you get answers to some questions and help you give you ideas on how to solve it. So coming back to the uh, elderly app, right? A memory and cognitive training app that offers brain games and activities to help elderly users maintain cognitive function, right? So you can directly ask it, how can you solve this? Can you suggest a few ways, right? That is super beautiful. Let's see what sort of answers we get. So offer a variety of brain games and activities that are specifically designed to logic improve and cognitive function. These could be memory games, logic games, and memory exercises. Now, the, another interesting thing that you could do over here is you can take this and you can ask ChatGPT, hey, can you give me examples of memory games? Can you give me examples of logic puzzles? You can ask for it more and more and more information, right? That's another way. As you can see, I'm getting direction on how to proceed over here. Then a couple of these are quite straightforward, like make the app easy to use and accessible to elderly people. So this probably means that you're gonna have like large buttons and font sizes, which is quite obvious. It's already suggesting that, so that's pretty cool. Um, some sort of social features and stuff. Maybe not a lot of people will use it, but it's also good to have. Provide recommendations on based on uh, user's progress. So here you are personalizing the experience, which is also pretty nice. Provide resource and tips. Um, gamification elements, as you see, as I had clearly mentioned for John, we could have had gamification elements such as rewards and achievements, offer difficulty levels, giving feedback and you know, stuff like that, right? So you can also get answers over here to problems. Okay, so let's move forward. Now here what I've done is I've taken a problem statement and I've directly thrown it to ChatGPT and said, hey, you create an app for me. I'm going to give you the concept, you come up with everything, right? So create an app, that helps sales representatives in a car showroom while talking to customer. So here I'm very specific about what my requirement is. I'm giving you giving ChatGPT the target user, which is sales representatives. I'm giving more context, which is in a car showroom. And I'm also telling it what the use case is, which is basically sell to customers uh, when talking to customers in a car showroom, right? So, so let's read what it said. So Car Showroom Buddy is an app that helps sales representatives in a car showroom by providing them with relevant information and resources while they are talking to customers, okay? The app allows sales representatives to quickly access important details about car models they are selling, such as features, specs, and pricing. It also provides access to images, videos, and other visual elements that can help sales managers better track the features and benefits of the car, right? So it is automatically taking the problem and also giving me a solution to it. Right? I'm not even throwing a problem. I'm just giving it an overall prompt. I'm saying, hey, sales representatives, car showroom, talking to customers, figure out the rest, right? So it's doing a lot of the work for me. In addition to providing sales reps with information, the app also offers tools and resources that helps them close deals, build relationships with customers. For example, it could provide access to sales scripts or a pitch guide, as well as tips and techniques for handling objections and negotiating prices, right? This is also a phenomenal use case. So we've already, so we've already gotten two use cases here for this, right? So we've got one, which is basically to give information about the car. The other one here is to help them make a sales pitch, negotiate, convince customers. The app could also have include the app could also include features such as customer tracking system, which allows sales rep to track the interaction with customers, um, identify potential needs or upsell communities, um, scheduling tool and a lot of these things, right? So this becomes sort of an internal management tool as well, right? So overall, 
Car Showroom Buddy is designed to help sales reps in car showroom provide a better customers and increase their sales productivity. So two problems that are being solved over here. Help them sales, increase the sales productivity and the other one is to provide better customer experience, right? And here we have three ways of doing it. And this is phenomenal. Now, I went a little bit crazy and I said, hey, can you give me another example of this, right? So here we have another one, which is Car Match, an app that helps sales representatives in the car showroom match customers with the best car for their needs and budget. So it's pretty much like filtering system. You, you as a customer go to a car showroom and then you go ahead and then you tell the sales representative person that, you know, you want this, 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 this is your budget. You want this type of car. You want it for this use case. You want this type of tires and seatings and leather seats and all of that stuff. And then it helps uh, the salesperson come up with a good set of options of what car the customer can buy. The app allows sales reps to input information about customers' preference and needs, such as their budget and all of these things, right? This is exactly what I mentioned. In addition to suggesting car models, the app can also provide detailed information about each car, including features, specs, and pricing. This we already spoke about in the beginning. It also provides access to images over here. Um, it can also have a pricing calculator tool, which is which is super important, right? What sort of features there should this product have, right? So if you think about it, right? So one you've got is... Um, to have a list of the information about uh, a particular car, um, resource material for the salespeople. Here, uh, additional tools like scheduling, tracking system, and stuff like that. Fourth one is a feature to match the car and the customer's requirements. So that's four features. Then you have, I think this one is repeated. And the last one, fifth one is a pricing calculator tool, which allows sales to quickly calculate the total cost depending on the financing options, right? This is beautiful. And it can also compare, it can also have a compare feature that allows sales reps to compare the different features and pricing and all of that, right? So the thing is you're getting so much information here without speaking to users, without doing user interviews, without doing user research, just by adding a prompt, you can get so much information over here. Right now, the other thing over here is that if you wanted more details on how this pricing calculator will work, you can go ahead and add an additional prompt. Can you and you can say something like, "Can you explain how the pricing calculator tool will work?" Right. I'm going to show you how you can create do something like this with another example, but I'm going to keep that for the later part of the video. Now, here is a very interesting thing. For every problem that you solve, you need to measure metrics. What is it that you can measure? So here I've said, what metrics would you track to see if the app is helping the above sales representatives do their job effectively? And the and chat GPT is automatically going to give you everything you need. So if you were to build this app for the customer salespeople, how are you going to track the performance of it? Right? How do you know this app is helpful? What metrics are you going to be tracking? This is my favorite part. Right? So first one. Customer satisfaction. One important metric to track is the customer satisfaction with the car buying process. This can be easily measured through surveys or customer feedback collected through the app or other channels, right? Now, here we're getting customer metrics, right? But in order to get this, you have to do a little bit more thinking yourself as a product designer and figure out how is the feedback system going to work between the customer and the sales representative, right? Because the customer is going to give feedback. So how does that feedback work? When does the feedback work? Is it in the showroom? Is it at home? Um, is it before buying the car? Is it after buying the car? When does it happen, right? Those are things that you have to additionally think about. Then sales productivity. Another important metric is to, um, to track the sales productivity, which is to be measured by the number of cars sold or the value of sales generated by the sales representative using the app, right? So if the, if a particular person is able to sell more cars or sell high value cars through the product, which is the app in this case, then it is improving the sales productivity, which is phenomenal. Time spent on sales tasks, right? This is critical. Tracking the amount of time spent on sales tasks, such as researching car models, calculating pricing, determining how effective the app is helping the sales representative do their jobs. Now, this is a little bit vague over here, but at least we're getting some idea, right? This is also called as task completion time. Customer retention. This is amazing. Monitoring customer retention. Retention is basically how often people come back to using your product, your app or your service, right? or the percentage of customers who return to the showroom after making additional purchases, right? Can also provide insight into the effectiveness of the app in helping sales representatives build relationships with customers, right? This is very important, especially for luxury brands. Lead conversion rate, tracking the lead conversion rate or percentage of leads that are converted into sales. User engagement, right? Now, even for you as a designer to decide what are the actual metrics, you just can't blindly follow this. You need to take each metric, sit down, and understand. 
Now, if you were to track lead conversion rates, for example, and here it says um, tracking the lead conversion rate or the percentage of leads that are converted into sales can provide insight into the effectiveness of the app in helping the sales rep close deals, right? Now, which means that before you track this, you need to have a system in place to track it, right? Because in an interview, if somebody asks you, hey, so how does this app help you in lead conversions, you need to have designed a solution or a system which will help you track this lead conversion rate, right? So you just can't go ahead and pick up solutions over here, design features, and then say these are the metrics, right? It doesn't work that way. Now, another interesting thing that you could do is you can actually say, um, if you were to come over here, right? If you ask ChatGPT, for this particular solution, what is the metric? then that would be a lot more helpful, right? So you can say, this is my user requirement where I want to provide access to sales scripts or pitch guides and tips and techniques. This is a solution, right? But what metric should I track for this particular solution, right? You can do that individually for all of these different four or five solutions and get specific metrics that you want to track for each of these solutions, right? Now, each of these solutions has its own problem, right? So you have a problem, you have a solution and you have individual metrics for each solution. Right? So that's how you actually want to make use of it. Now, moving forward. So Apple Music recently released a feature uh, where you can um, use karaoke. So it's a, it, it was a karaoke feature. So now if you are confused of why Apple did this, you can go ahead and ask ChatGPT, what is the benefit of adding this uh, for a music app company? What is the benefit of adding a karaoke feature? Right? This will basically help you understand why companies do something. But again, do not blindly listen to anything it says. Use your own mind, right? Some of it is right, some of it is wrong, some of it doesn't make sense, some of it makes partially sense, right? Because ChatGPT doesn't have all the information to make a decision. It's making, it's trying its best, right? So the first one is increased user engagement. Of course, more people are going to use Apple Music if this feature is there, right? So this adds to the increase in retention and engagement. Retention means users are going to come back to the app again and again. And engagement is, is how long are people using your app, right? Users may be more likely to spend more time on the app, right? That is basically engagement and come back to it more frequently if they can sing along to their favorite songs. New revenue streams. Right now, Apple Music is already a subscription based app. You have to get the Apple subscription if you want to do it. Right. So in this case, this is not valid. Right. It's not a new revenue stream because you're already paying for Apple Music with a subscription. Right. Improved customer loyalty. Now, now this is something that we can't really measure. This is a qualitative metric and not a quantitative metric, but this can still be measured, but not through data. Then enhanced brand reputation, which is obviously fine. And then social sharing. So karaoke is a social activity. So adding a karaoke feature could encourage users to share their performance with friends on social media platforms. This could increase the visibility and reach of the marketing app, right? So this is something that could be created by the marketing team. The marketing, the marketing team of the company could come up with a feature like this, right? So this is pretty cool. So take any feature and, and ask ChatGPT, what is the benefit of having this feature? Why is this feature important? You're going to learn so much from that. Now, here comes an interesting thing, right? Now you take a particular flow and you can then ask ChatGPT, hey, can you give me a user flow for this specific app? So here I've asked a prompt, design a user flow for an app that allows employees to order food. And here I made a typo, right? But it still went ahead and corrected that, which is pretty cool, to order food when having uh, while having lunch in the cafeteria. Right. So give me a user flow. So it is telling me all the steps that I need to perform. But again, don't blindly listen to this because you need to use your common sense and validate a lot of these things. I'm going to give you an example over here. So the employee opens the app and logs in with the company credentials. OK, makes a lot of sense. Now, here there's an edge case could be is what if there are guests, right? People, what if there are people who are not employees, right? It could be external parties like board members or auditors or, you know, family members. It could be anybody, right? So how is that going to work? You know, you need to solve for that edge case. Then the app shows the current location and shows the available food items, which is fine. The employee selects the food items they want to order, which is also straightforward. Total cost, employee confirms the order, right? Now, here it automatically sends, says, sends a notification to the cafeteria, but I think payment should be before that, right? You should make the payment before you place the order, right? So that's something that's incorrect over here. 
The app sends a notification to the staff to prepare the order. The employee can track the status of the order in real time, including an estimated wait time. Now, this might be too techy and too, too much of an overkill of a feature to have for a small company, right? Maybe in very large or massive companies with huge cafeterias, this might work. But again, is this really needed, right? They just want to know if the order is placed and if the food is ready. They don't need to know anything else in between, right? Quite common sense. When the order is ready, the employee receives a notification and goes to the cafeteria to pick up the food, which is pretty good. And then the employee then scans a QR code or enters a code to retrieve their order, right? So this is sort of to validate that this food item is for this particular person, okay? The employee pays for their order using a stored payment method or scanning a QR code to pay with their mobile wallet. Now, this case, like I mentioned, it should have been done before placing the order and not after placing the order. So step number nine would ideally not be over here, right? Now, the other thing is, is there a simpler way to solve this without using QR code and stuff like that, right? Because it, this feels like you always need to have a QR code and there's also possibility, right? What if there is one person ordering for more people, right? So let's say there's one person who's ordering five dishes for five of his colleagues, right? So how is that going to work, right? This means that you need to have the mobile phone with you. You need to, the person who has the mobile phone who place the order has to go and get it, right? Now that may be okay, that may not be okay, but these are things you have to actually think about and you can't get all answers from ChatGPT. Now here again, throwing a few edge cases, what are the few edge cases, right? Limited connectivity, um, order errors. There might be instances where an order orders the, where the employee orders the wrong food item or where there's an error in the order. So there should be a feature to employees to cancel it or for, modify their order. This is definitely an edge case that you have to solve for. Payment issues, allergies and directory restrictions. Again, here, this is definitely what I was talking about. The app should be able to support orders for large groups such as meetings or events with features such as group ordering or payment options. Very important, right? This is what makes an entire product. You're solving for multiple use cases and edge cases. It's very important to think about these things. Then limited menu options, this is fine. And I don't know why uh, weather plays an important role over here, but uh, but again, it might be depending on partic your particular use case, right? Now, here is something that's very interesting and definitely you should check this out. So create a conversation for a guest at a luxury hotel and a chat bot inside a dedicated app for a luxury hotel, right? So to repeat, there's a conversation between the guest at a luxury hotel and a chat bot inside a dedicated app. Now, this was again one of my other problem statements on my Instagram, which is to design a smart and interactive chat experience for a luxury hotel, right? So now there's a lot of ways to do this, but you need some context, some base to solve these problems. So let's see if we can get some ideas. So the guest is, hi, I'm a guest at the luxury hotel. Is there a way to request additional towels from the app? So now what you're trying to do here is trying to figure out what are the ways, what are the things this app or this chatbot can be used for? What are the use cases? What are the user needs, right? And the great thing here is that you don't even have to talk to people or do user interviews. You can just go ahead and directly get all answers you want from here. So it says, hello guest, thank you for staying. You can request for additional tow towels through the amenity section by selecting the towel request option, right? So now you're getting so many interesting ideas. So now you know what is the use case, all right? Then you know there's something called to be, there's gonna be some sort of an amenity section, which means there are gonna be other sections as well, which could be your details, um, room service, additional requests, spa booking, whatever it is, right? And it also says selecting the towel request option. So maybe there are a bunch of preset items that you can click on and you don't even have to type anything. You just have to go to the section, tap on a button and then you're done, right? You're getting a lot of solutions just by looking at this conversation. Great. I was wondering if it is possible to order room service through the app, right? So here's another one. So here it says, go to the dining section, right? You can browse through our menu, place your order directly. If you have any special requests, please let us know and we'll do your best to accommodate them, right? So. You're all, you're solving for a lot of edge cases. Here, it's not just about, you know, ordering food, right? If somebody has a dietary restriction, you might have missed that, right? So you want to integrate that in the user flow as well. Then I also wanted to ask about the spa services, right? So it says you can go to the spa section, right? Now, what I did here was I went ahead and asked, can you suggest more complex interactions between the chatbot and the hotel guest, right? And let's see what it got. Um, hi, I'm a guest at a hotel. I have some issues with the Wi-Fi. This is definitely something a lot of people face, right? So let's see what the, how the chatbot could help. Hello guest, sorry to hear that. Can you please provide me with your room number um, and description of the issue you are experiencing? This will help our technical team troubleshoot the ideas and get back to you as soon as possible, right? Now, if you look at this, right? Um, 
the way I would have designed this particular app is that once the user downloads the app, I automatically log in with my room number, right? So that information is already stored. Maybe it is with my phone number. Maybe it is, maybe it is with my email ID, right? But here we may not need to ask the room number because it's already pre-filled into the app by the hotel, right? Now, and here it's saying, can you give me a description of the issues you're experiencing, right? So maybe there's a list of preset options that you can tap on, right? And you don't even have to type anything. Let's say Wi-Fi not connecting. Let's say um, the Wi-Fi icon is not visible, right? Or let's say Wi-Fi is connected, but internet is not working, right? All of these three things can be pre-filled things, right? So just by reading this, you're getting a lot of ideas of how you can structure or design solutions for the app. Right. So here the guest says my room number is three four five, and the Wi-Fi keeps disconnecting every few minutes. Right. Which means that maybe there was a button that was present before that said Wi-Fi keeps disconnecting. Right. So here it says I will forward this information to our technical team who will be with you shortly to resolve the issue. In the meantime, you can restart your device and all of these things. Right. So this is pretty cool. Um, and then here's another one. I'm trying to check out tomorrow's morning. I'm go I'm trying to check out tomorrow morning, but I'm not sure what the hotel checkout is. Can you help me with that? Right. Maybe there's a section inside the app itself which provides all this information like a check-in time, check-out time, check-out date, um, the the room per, the cost per night, um, you know, upgrade options and stuff like that, right? So it says the checkout time is 11 a.m. If you need a little bit late checkout, let us know. We'll do our best to accommodate your request. Um, you can go to the checkout section and then selecting the late checkout option, right? So here it's actually giving you the solution and all you have to do is sit down and design the UI, right? So if you have any other questions, let us know. So this is pretty cool. Now, I went ahead and asked a couple more things. What are some good ways to design a good experience for the hotel guest while talking to the chatbot, right? I'm just following up on this. So here it says personalization. Personalize its responses based on the guest's preferences and industry. So make sure that when you're designing this, always keep personalization in mind, right? These are goals and objectives of the design. Responsiveness should respond to requests and inquiries in a timely manner with minimal mating times. This could be a metric that you want to track. Accuracy, provide up-to-date information and resolve issues and handle requests effectively. Of course, definitely a good user experience, contextual awareness, and again, customer support, right? I don't know why it keeps saying customer support a hundred times, but whatever. Um, now here, can you elaborate on how to design a user-friendly interface that you have mentioned above, right? Can you give me a few examples or ideas? So I've just taken one of this, which is basically a user-friendly interface, and I've asked, can you elaborate on that? Let's see what it says. Simple as possible, this is again pretty obvious, easy to understand, concise language, consistency. Uh, you want to make sure that you have the same tone. You, you want to make sure you're framing the sentences the right way, right? All of this comes in. Now, now, now the thing is that this will help This will help copywriters, this will help product people, this will help engineers, and this is not only going to help designers, right? But as a product designer, you need to be aware of all of these things, right? It gave me a few more information, I'm going to get into that. Now, here is an interesting one. Can you have, give me a few edge cases where the chatbot may not be able to solve a hotel guest query, right? So here it said with things like complex issues such as uh, booking a private event or making arrangements for a VIP guest, right? Unable to resolve technical issues or network or software issues, legal issues, non-routine tasks such as um, unusual or unexpected amenities or service, right? You may need to consult with a human representative. So it's giving you a couple of edge cases. I'm not very convinced with these, but um, it's fine for now because we are just, you know, playing around with chat GPT, right? And here, what are the metrics you would measure to verify the efficiency of a chatbot? How would you know that this chatbot is helpful? Very important. User adoption. This could be measured by the number of users who interact with the chatbot as well as the frequency of use, which is basically how many times are people using it? How many guests are using it, right? If any guest enters the hotel and lives there, are they using the app, right? If they're not using it, it could be two reasons. Either they don't know about it or they find it very cumbersome or maybe they just don't understand how to use the app, right? So this is just one of the metric. What are the other ones? User satisfaction, right? This could be through ratings. Now, this is something for you to think about. If you want to rate the service provided by the chatbot, how would you design that rating experience, right? Retention rate, you know, how many inquiries are being resolved by the chatbot? And here, emphasis on resolved by chatbot. Average response time, all right? This could be measured by the amount of time it takes for the chatbot to respond to the user's queries, giving timely and, effe and efficient service. Conversion rate. What does conversion rate in this case mean? This could be measured by the number of users who complete a desired action, such as booking a call, getting a query 
you know, sort of sorted, requesting towels in that case, right? So these are things. But again, don't blindly listen to all of this, right? You figure out what are the problems. You figure out what are the use cases. You figure out what are the solutions. And then accordingly for that, you see which metric you should be measuring for that particular solution, right? Very important. So that's how you use ChatGPT to become a smart designer. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. I'll see you guys in my next video. So take care and bye-bye.